James Larkin, otherwise known as Jim Larkin, is an Irish icon today for the work he did a century ago. James Larkin was a man of the people, and possibly his most memorable achievement would be his critical role in the Dublin lockout of 1913, a major industrial dispute between 20,000 workers and employers and the Dublin United Tramway Company as well as Guinness. However, the story of James Larkin and the Dublin lockout goes back to organizing the Irish labor movement of 1912. James Larkin began in Belfast to push dock workers to join the National Union of Dock Laborers, or Noodle for short. He succeeded in his efforts to unionize the dock workers, but as employers refused to meet demands, the workers began to strike. The strike began a long line of strikes. The first strike he organized didn't gain much success, however his ability to build people together for a better cause sparked a long line of strikes and unionization. Larkin moved south and continued his endeavors to inspire workers to fight for better treatment in the workplace with a large amount of success. Later on, it was discovered that Larkin was using union funds to pay workers while they were on strike. This caused him to be expelled from Noodle and put on trial for embezzlement in 1910. James Larkin was sentenced to a year in prison, but after three months he was released because the sentence was considered unjust. After this, Larkin founded the Irish Transport and General Workers Union, otherwise known as ITGWU, an acronym that is nowhere near as catchy as Noodle. ITGWU is known today as the Services Industrial Professional and Technical Union, or SIPTU. In 1913 came the famed Dublin lockout. Larkin continued his quest to unionize workers to fight for better wages and benefits. In 1913, James Larkin unionized the workers of both Guinness and the Dublin United Tramway Company. During this time, Larkin coined the phrase, a fair day's work for a fair day's pay. The resulting industrial dispute was the largest in Ireland's history, and it resulted in many Irish companies outsourcing to Britain for workers. Many of the striking workers had to survive on inadequate donations from the British Trades Union Congress and ITGWU. The lockout dragged on for seven months and affected tens of thousands of workers. The mainstream media of Ireland at the time painted James Larkin as the villain in their newspapers. The police began to catch on to Larkin and began to hunt him down. When a meeting called by Larkin for Sunday the 31st of August in 1913 was prescribed, Constance Markovich and her husband Casimir disguised Larkin in Casimir's frock coat and trousers and put on stage makeup and a beard, and Nellie Gifford, who was unknown to the police, led him into William Martin's Murphy's Imperial Hotel, pretending to have Larkin be her stooped, deaf old clergyman uncle, to disguise his instantly recognizable Liverpool accent. Larkin tore off his beard inside the hotel and raced to the balcony where he shouted his speech to the crowd below. The police made up of 300 Royal Irish Constabulary reinforcing Dublin Metropolitan Police savagely baton charged the crowd, injuring between 400 and 600 people. The violence from police inspired James Larkin, James Connolly, and Jack White to create the Irish Citizen Army. The Citizen Army during the lockout armed themselves with hurling sticks and bats to protect themselves and workers from the police. Jack White, a former captain in the British Army, trained the citizens and bought them shoes so that they could be prepared to fight off the police. The lockout ended the next year due to many reasons, mainly funding problems. Larkin continued on to do more for Ireland in his later years. James Larkin is now a prominent figure in Irish history. He was a people's hero and is now a symbol for fair work and wages. He even has a statue in the middle of Dublin. There are numerous songs, poems, and even a road about Larkin. James Larkin may have gone against the law, but he worked for the people to give them better lives.